Hey there, friends. It's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping in today. I have a new layout to share for Hip Kit Club, and I'm using the 2021 January kits again. And before I get into the layout for today, I just wanted to let everyone know that this is my final layout and video for Hip Kit Club for the foreseeable future. I've decided to step down from the design team for the next term. Um, mainly just because I just have a lot going on in my real life right now and I just have too many scrapbooking deadlines and it's becoming overwhelming to me and um, I just feel like I need a break. Um, I love scrapbooking and I have loved it for years and I have been on multiple design teams non-stop since 2010 and just you know my kids are getting older their needs are changing and just things in real life are different and I feel like I'm at my desk too much and I just need some time off. I need fewer deadlines and less stress and it has nothing to do with the team. It has nothing to do with the kits. Kimberly has been a dear friend. She's been amazing, very, very generous with her beautiful kits for so many years and I'm so grateful to her for having me all this time and I have truly loved every second of it. Um, but I'm just, I'm trying to look out for myself, my mental health, my family, and I just, I just need a break for a little while. So I hope you guys understand that. I'm not going away completely. I will still be around, but I'm just taking advantage of the term ending and just, you know, taking a break for now. So I just, I didn't want anyone to wonder what happened, but that's the story for now. And yeah, uh, the new team is going to be announced soon. And I know there's going to be a lot of amazing scrappers there. So you're still going to get lots of inspiration. So I hope you guys understand. And thank you so much for letting me tell you that. So for this layout, you're kind of, you've been watching me work with this cut file that you can find over on the HipKit website. And that is where my first idea started. Um, and so at this point in the layout, what you saw me doing there was kind of the direction that I was going. Um, I am gonna do some mixed media on the background and the background is uh, thick, smooth, white card stock. And I'm gonna uh, cover it with some clear gesso. This is the Art Basics Finibear that I've been using a lot in the past several months and I love it because it's smooth and it dries pretty quickly. Um, so I, like I said, I took a break and came back and I changed my mind. I don't wind up using that cut file because I have been wanting to use these fringed strips and I have not done it yet. I mean, this is my fifth layout with these kits and I have yet to use these and I thought, I want to use these. And so I just, I don't know, I just had a, a different idea pop into my head. So I'm going to try it see if it works um, and I was in a mood for purple um, there's a lot of purple in the kits and so I I picked out the two that had the most purple and I thought that I would just start with gluing them down kind of in the middle of the layout and using them as a base to start the design and since I'm using two photos and I want to kind of layer them together um, this kind of acts as a shelf for me to put the photos on. And I think the fringe creates such really awesome dimension and texture. It's just, it's really fun. So that's what I mean as by a shelf. I can put the photos kind of on them there and work with it. And I tried to use the cut file with it. Um, I just didn't love it as much um, with both the fringe and the cut file together. So I wind up not using the cut file, but that's okay. I'm going to keep it and use it for something else because it is really cute. So I'm going to stick with the purple here and I'm going to use the shimmers that we get in the color kit this month. It's an Inklings Precious Posy and it dries really, really shimmery and beautiful in the light. So I'm just going to use a brush with a little bit of water added in and I'm going to create a little watercolor area down below the fringe and then a little bit above the fringe. And I'm going to wind up bringing in lots of other colors. I still want to use all of those flowers that you saw me playing around with in the beginning. So I'm going to be bringing in some pinks and some yellows and some blues. Um, but yeah, this was just kind of a nice base. And I wanted to get purple down there. Because in the color kits, we get a yellow color and the blue color. And I just wanted to go with the purple because I was just feeling the purple vibe. So... That's where we're going to go. And I'm going to position my photos on the right side because my daughter is looking toward the left. And I like to have my subjects kind of 
facing into the center of the page to where it looks like they have something to look at across the page. So this is what I've got so far. I like it. I'm going to keep letting the purple dry and add just a little bit here and there to kind of add some, you know, more of a, of a darker color. Because when you add water to the shimmers, you know, it does dilute it a little bit and it's going to make it a little bit lighter. So I do work with it until I get it just the right shade. And then I pulled this color out. This was from last month, I think. This was the Shimmers Christmas Cheer. And it looks yellow here, but it's a really glittery golden color. And so I splattered a little bit of that as well. And I'm not worried about adding too much watercolor to the top right area because the photos are going to go there. And it's going to cover up, you know, anything that I put on the background. So... I'm just mainly wanting the watercolor to show below and then to the left of the photos. And some flowers are going to go on top of it, so you're going to be able to see it kind of behind and in between everything. And I want to incorporate some of these chipboard frames, um, maybe as layers like I have there. I played around with this off camera, and I just decided to do some flower clusters. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of fussy cutting from this pattern paper. There's a lot of purple flowers with uh, hints of yellow. So I'm going to cut out a couple of those. And then there were some flowers and some circle images on this clear sticker sheet that I thought I might use. But I wanted them to have a white base because if I place them on top of that purple background, the colors are going to look different. So I'm going to put these on some white scrap card stock and then cut them out. And I don't wind up using all of them. Um, I just wind up using a couple of the small flowers. And I'm going to cut those out so I can move them around like die cuts. And I really like this one here. It's that orangey yellow color um, that I'm liking in the kits. So um, I've already got some of the die cuts up there from the um, one of the floral die cut packs. And I did go around the edges and trim off some of that thick white border around all of those die cuts just to make them... Um, smaller because sometimes the white border makes them bigger and it just kind of it's hard to layer them down um, and I, I've, I've been wanting to use more of these these are it's a whole clear sticker sheet of little stitches and oh man I wish my sewing machine would do all of those stitches there's some really cool ones on there so I thought instead of actually using my sewing machine I would use these and uh, I just kind of went crazy. I layered one up at the top there, and then I'm going to layer some. Well, I keep saying layer, not necessarily layer. I'm going to stick them down here underneath the fringe, kind of around that watercolor area, and just kind of create some interest down there. So these are awesome. If you don't have a sewing machine, but you love the look of stitching, then these are awesome. I remember back in the day, I had a whole stamp set of stitches, but it was stamps. And so if you used... You know, black ink, it would look like you use black thread, and I use that all the time before I finally got a sewing machine. I don't even remember where I got it or where it is. It's probably somewhere deep in the depths of the stuff in my room. Who knows? I'll have to go digging to see if I still have it. But um, anyway, what I did here was I added another piece of that fringe. There's a, a sheet that's got, or not a sheet, but a piece, a strip that's got some green on it. And I thought, I think I need some green since a lot of the flower die cuts that I'm going to use have green leaves. I thought that bringing some green down into the fringe would would uh, work really well. So I just kind of wedged it in between the two purple ones that I already had there because it already glued them down. Um, and I really like how that looks. And I, I took that one all the way to the edge of the background. And I like that pop of green. So I'm going to go with that. And then I'm going to slowly but surely try to figure out where to put all of these flowers again. Because I want them all to show, but I also want to kind of create a cluster and kind of layer them around on both sides of the pictures there. And yeah, I think I'm gonna wind up layering some kind of to the left corner of the left photo where the pink and the yellow flower uh, are right now and then kind of trickle them down into the bottom half of the page. Uh, but I'm not sure where my title's gonna go, so I'm gonna hold off on that for the moment. And I also wanna use that I Love You Puffy Heart. Not sure where though. Um, so before I start to glue, I'm going to get my photos layered up. At this point, I'm just going to layer a little bit of tissue paper behind them. And this is just plain white tissue paper that you would put in a gift bag. It's nothing special. Um, but I like to do this to add a little bit of a subtle 
border. And I like that you can rip it, you can tear it, you can kind of crush it around and make it look uneven and wonky. And uh, it just, it's, it's not something that stands out, but it just, it adds a little bit of interest and detail and just that little something extra that kind of helps separate the photo from everything behind it. Um, and I am going to pop the photos up to give them some dimension. Since the right photo is on top of that chipboard frame, I want to make sure that the photos are all the same level. And then I'm really glad I chose this color of thread. It's that orangey yellow color because I was trying to figure out what color. And I was either going to go with that color or a blue color because there are I think one or two little bits of the flowers that have that sky blue color um, and then I also added in one of those the stitches down there the, the the one on the bottom is a blue color but I really like this orangey yellow color and it just goes I don't know it just matches well I like it um, I did find that the clear stickers well it's obvious they're shiny because they're clear stickers and so I, I wanted them to be a little less shiny so I just smudged a little bit of white gesso on top of them so they're more on the matte side uh, because when I, when I go to photograph this I didn't want them to be so shiny that they reflected in the photo if that makes sense kind of along the same lines of when you use metallic gold or silver it's really hard to photograph and if you don't get it just in the right light it looks black or it looks really dark and you don't get the effect of the gold um, so whenever something's really shiny, I like to kind of tone it down a little bit so it, it photographs a little bit better. And it doesn't really take away from the stitches because, you know, they look the same. It's just the, the clear sticker part isn't as shiny. Um, gluing everything down finally, very slowly. I don't want to remove things because I like how it looks and I want to make sure that I keep it that way. So I'm just very slowly but surely picking things up, gluing it down and then we're going to go from there all right this is what i've got so far i glued some flowers up at the top some that i fussy cut from that pattern paper um but yeah i like how that fringe just kind of curls up off the page really cute i think i'm going to put the i love you sticker right there um i tried it above the photos all the way to the left and it just kind of it didn't flow with all the flowers and so i think it looks good right there even though it's on top of some of the fringe I like it. I think it works. And then here's what I was talking about earlier. I was going to kind of bring some of the flowers down to the bottom, but this was after I decided that I was going to put my title kind of on top of the purple watercolor. And I'm going to use a mix of the white puffy stickers and the smaller um, purple ones. And my title is just going to be, I just really love her because I do and I <laughs> I wanted a simple title and so that's it and I used the word love or not use the word I used the purple alphas for the word love and uh, yeah because these were just some cute couch cuddling selfies and you know when I look at pictures like this that's that's what I think I'm like oh, I just love her she's so sweet you know just those simple phrases that pop into my mind and sometimes those are the best titles you know, it doesn't have to be something complicated. And, you know, most of the pictures that I scrap are just everyday moments. And so I like the simple everyday titles. Um, I am going to use my gold metallic pen to kind of create a little bit of a shadow around the, the white letters because it is white on white pretty much. And I wanted them to stand out just a little bit more and be a little bit visible, more visible. I'm going to add my lines for my journaling using my T-square ruler. I love that ruler. Um, got that at joann.com years ago. It was like two dollars and change. It was very cheap and it was, <laughs> it was a great purchase. I'm using my black sharpie for my journaling and then I'm going to add in another flower. Apparently I didn't have enough. Yep, we're going to add it right there. I wanted to do my journaling first because I wasn't sure if I wanted more flowers or not. Um, and I try to add some more thread. I, I try to add a pop of blue um, underneath that big flower that I just glued down, but it just looked too messy. I don't know. It didn't didn't look right. I like the pop of color, but I don't know. I just felt like it was... Looking at it now, I kind of like it, but when I was making it, I thought, eh, I don't like that. So I took it off, and I just decided to stick it right here just for a pop of blue. Not really because it was thread, and I didn't want it to really look like thread. I just wanted to, to notice a little bit of blue when I looked in that area. Um, and then that's what 
made me decide to add some blue splatters. So this is the blue spray that we get in the color kit this month. It's a shimmer. It's called Snowway Man, and it's a really pretty sky blue. Uh, so I use that. Then I decided here at the last that I needed something on the white. There was just too much white space. So I wanted something at the top and the bottom. So I'm going to go back to the other pieces of fringe and trim it up so the fringe part is really small and just glue a blue piece down here at the bottom. And then I'm going to do the same thing with that pink strip at the top. So it's still the fringe. I just, I didn't want it to be so thick. And uh, so yeah, I just trimmed off a lot of the little fringy pieces there and made a big old mess. Basically confetti all over my scrapbook room, but that's okay. And then glue the pink one down and do the same thing. And I believe that's it. I think so. Yep, that's the final layout. I like how this turned out. I love the colors. I'm glad I finally used the fringe. I think it looks really neat and yeah, it's one of those things where I saw it as soon as I opened the kits and I thought, what am I going to do with this? And then I've just been putting it off until I finally had an idea and here we have it. But um, I got a lot of close-ups here. I just want to say thank you guys so, so much for always leaving such awesome comments on my hip kit videos. Like I said before, I have truly cherished every moment on this team and you know, I may be back at some point, but just for now, um, I just need a break and... I want to, you know, again, just say thank you for all of your support and all of your sweet comments over the years on all of my pages. I feel like I've watched my style kind of evolve over the years um, through this team and through the kits. And I can't wait to see what you guys make with the February kits. So I hope you got some ideas from this video. I hope it uh, gave you some inspiration. And uh, yeah. Thank you so, so much for sticking with me and for watching. I hope you guys have a great week, and I will see you in another video soon, hopefully. Thank you.